But here's what's now. In our studio, we have, of course, uh, Angie Crum and uh, Don Grew, who race at the Jeffersonville Sports Drome Speedway. And we'll start things off with Angie. Angie, uh, you run in the uh, Dromer Oval Division. Uh, second place in the point standings, only one spot out of the championship. Man, oh man, what an accomplishment. You've got to be proud of your car and crew. Yes, I'm very proud of all of them. Uh, there's so many people involved with it. I'm sure I'd forget to thank somebody, but uh, first off, I have to thank my husband for getting me involved in it to start with. And then Gary Hall, uh, he does anything from body work to engine work for us. And then Tommy Brown Jr. and Sr., uh, Scott Brown, John Basham, uh, Benny Eagler and ha Hammer and Harold Murphy. Mm -hmm. They help us out quite a bit too to keep it going all year long and uh, just gnaw away at it little by little each week. Of course, we'll give you a chance to mention your sponsors in a moment, but uh, how long have you been racing? Uh, how long has it taken you to get to number two? This past season was our third full season. And uh, each year I just tried to learn a little bit more that I could, uh, patience, be, when to be aggressive, uh, uh, when to slow down a little bit and watch what's going on around me and when to just take off and do what I need to do. So. Do you have any kids? Yes. W what's their take on this? My mama drives a race car. Oh, they love it. Uh, I've got three teenage boys, uh, Joseph, Justin, and Jacob, and uh, they, they love it. They go to the track and they're, go mom, you know, it, it's great. And at school, they, they love to use that as a conversation starter with new people when they meet, you know, new people and things like that, so. Angie, do you, uh, obviously, do you drive the car, but, but uh, do you really know what's going on under the hood? Do you, do, do you work on the car much? Oh, yeah. I help them every way I can. I don't know a lot of uh, the minute details as far as engine building or anything like that, but, yeah, I get in there and get dirty and mm -hmm. tighten up a few nuts and bolts here and there, and mm -hmm. I can let them know what they need to adjust and uh, where I'm not getting enough power here or if it's pushing on me or if it's loose, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Car, how the car is handling. Well, with one feature win and consistently the seven top five finishes, and many of those wins had to come from deep in the pack. I've uh, seen you bust through there uh, two and three wide sometimes, uh, uh, just giving uh, all those, those other guys just fits uh, moving up through there. But what happens if some, somebody sees you coming and you cut them off? Or, or they cut you off, and it's they intentionally knock you out of the race or something. How do you vent your frustrations? Well, I, I explode. I, I'm just like anybody <laughs> else. I won't lie about that. I do explode once I get back to the pit stall, but mm -hmm. once I calm down a little bit, I just go and talk to them driver to driver, just like you know any of the men would. You know, I'm not out there as a woman in a man's world. I'm out there as a driver with the rest of the drivers. So. We do have a few confrontations, but we just talk it out. Anybody take advantage of you because you are a woman? I wouldn't say that they take advantage of me. Uh, the, the first year and then even into the second year of racing, I did feel like I had to fight for my right to be out there with them. Mm -hmm. But now they know that anything they give to me, I'm going to give straight back to them. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just one of the guys out there with them now. So Angie, do you want to take this to another level anytime soon? Uh, at uh, you know, Stay in the Dromer Oval Division uh, to come back and get the title? And then if you do or don't, what's after that? Well, th this year we were actually considering moving up, and two of my main sponsors wanted me to come back and try to get the championship. If we don't get the championship this year, I'm sure we're going to go ahead and move up to extreme next year. And speaking of moving up to the extreme oval division, we've got Don Grew here. Don, you raced uh, 11th place into the points in the point standings in 19, or excuse me, in 2005. Mm -hmm. Sat out uh, last season, knee surgery. Yes. Anything serious? No, no, it's all good now, but I did have to sit out for the season just to make sure everything had healed up okay, and of course that was a struggle to sit out and watch everyone else compete and sit on the sidelines and watch. That was, that was a tough season. How long have you been racing? I'm going into my sixth season this year. Six years. Mm -hmm. Now your husband, Art, who helps prepare your car, mm -hmm. he was a uh, former racer. Yeah, and he still races. He'll be coming out in the Extreme 8 this year as well. Okay. Now you're going to move up to the Extreme Oval Division. Those are the fastest oval cars. Uh, what type of car are you going to have? Who's building it? Uh, we're going to have an extreme oval car. Uh, we bought one from someone else, former racer from last year that got out of it. Um, Art's putting it together in our garage as we speak and doing a good job of it. Um, hopefully we'll have, we got a sponsor on board this year, Teen Up 2000, who's going to be assisting us with some of the parts and that type of thing. And hopefully we'll get some more sponsors on board that can help us get a good engine in it, 
good handling car. You mentioned before the cameras came on one of your most embarrassing moments on the racetrack, water bottle. What happened? <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, actually a 100 lap race, I believe, very, very hot, you know, August, and uh, they had a caution lap that just seemed to go on forever, just circling around the track. And my husband was kind enough to pass out a bottle of Gatorade to one of the officials to hand to me during caution. <laughs> And, you know, you're, you're hot and you're thinking about what you're going to do on the track next and without thinking, you know, toss the water bottle back and had my full face helmet stay close. So I ended up wearing most of that water. <laughs> I had Gatorade all over you. Yes. Yeah. How'd you do in the race? <laughs> Actually, I finished ninth in that race. So. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. They dunked the Gatorade on you early. <laughs> well, Dawn, uh, how much uh, work are you doing on the car this year? Uh, you're just going to drive the thing, or are you going to actually uh, adjust the valve tappets? <laughs> no, I, I do get out there and help. I obviously don't know it to the extent that my husband and the crew does, but mm -hmm. I do things where I can, and I try to learn as much as possible by going out in the garage. And, you know, a lot of it uh, you learn through experience. You know, when I first got out there the first season of racing, you know, if you were to ask me what the car was doing, I could. I could describe what it was doing, but I didn't know what was causing it, and I didn't know what things to tell him to help him set the car up better. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the years, I've learned through experience what type of things to tell him that the car is doing so that we can better adjust the handling of it, and, and that just comes with experience. Well, and now, uh, of course, uh, racing for most folks, either one of you, is probably not, sp not possible without sponsors. And uh, Angie, uh, you're, you're looking for a few more supporters this year. Yes, I, I am. I would love to get a couple more sponsors on board. Right now I've got Tune Up 2000. Uh, also, Benny Eagler helps us with the, a lot of the stuff for our engines, and that's a tremendous help. But, of course, racing can be an expensive sport, and so any additional sponsorship only adds to be more competitive in it. How do they get hold of you? Uh, they can reach me at uh, uh, dgrew at aol.com. Okay. Angie, your sponsor. Or, excuse me, uh, Dawn, your sponsor. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm Angie Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Got it wrong again. That's quite all right. Just lightening the, the mood here a little bit. Um, actually, we have Workman's Towing and Recovery. This would be the third year that we've had uh, Workman's with us on the car. Uh, Nick's Powder Keg. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Nick. Sure. And uh, we also have AutoZone mm -hmm. and Christian Cleaning Service, mm -hmm. Connor's Body Shop, uh, Felker's Machine Shop, and our newest member of our race team is Curves Workout Facility in Fern Creek. Mm -hmm. So well, we've got well, quite a few this year, but yeah, plenty sure. of room for more. And uh, if anybody uh, wants to get in touch with me, they can reach me at Mrs. Crum 3 at yahoo.com. Okay, Curves kind of goes along with the racetrack. Hey, we'll be back. Speaking of racetrack, we'll be back with Mike Gibson of the Jeffersonville Sports Strom Speedway. Find out more about what's happening this upcoming season. We'll be right back.